Hello my darlings, welcome to a new vlog. Not my usual attire, this is quite literally my sunbathing cap. As you may know from previous videos um, or where videos have suddenly stopped, I am quite prone to migraines and I feel like one of the things which is a telltale sign that I'm going to get a migraine is if I let the sun be on my head for too long during the day or if I let um, if I let the top of my head be exposed during the heat of the day, then I am prone to a migraine. So a really good solution that I found is actually wearing a cap. And obviously a white cap is amazing because it bounces the sun away. So this is my top tip if you are um, living somewhere that's lovely and sunny right now. Today is day two of the UK's heat wave. Um, yesterday we were driving to and from London, so we were in an air-conditioned car most of the day. It's actually after lunch, I'm a little bit late starting the vlog today, but I've spent all morning and the start of the afternoon just sat outside under the umbrella on the table getting loads of work done because I was on my phone yesterday as opposed to on my laptop there was quite a lot of emails and stuff that I needed to do so it's been a productive morning I really love our outdoor office under the umbrella sometimes I put my legs in the sunshine just to get a little bit of um, a little bit of a tan going but most of the time I'm just sat in the shade and then if there's something that I can do on my phone then I'll go and sit on a deck chair and I feel like I have got a little bit of a tan today. I was wearing a bandeau bikini top but I've just put a little bit of clothing on um, to come and do a few inside jobs now. The hat most definitely does not go with this outfit. Um, I'll take that off in a second but this is what I've changed into. This is a really lovely skirt that was very kindly sent to me from Anne Louise Boutique and then this is the top which I think is pretty little thing. I bought this gosh about two or three years ago. Yeah, it's definitely time for the cap to come off. We've already had our post for the day today and this set was sent to me very kindly from Sweaty Betty and it is just the most beautiful vivid colours. You've got this almost neon orange toned against this beautiful deep navy. I'm not gonna lie, I have not actually worked out in at least a week, so I'm gonna set the alarm for six tomorrow and get in the gym before it gets too hot because tomorrow is going to be another heat wave day. And something else really gorgeous that arrived today, is the camera gonna focus on it? There we go, is this ring from Rosie Fortescue. So Rosie has her own jewelry company called Rosie Fortescue Jewelry, and this is a rose gold and champagne emerald gem ring. She very kindly sent this over, so it's been a really lovely morning of deliveries and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This is £90 and to tell you the truth, I thought it was going to be at least £300 because it looks so gorgeous and so expensive. Um, a really nice piece to just elevate your everyday jewellery. I thought I would give you a bed update as well because I know lots of you are upset that I didn't uh, give a review of the mattress yesterday because we were because it was our London day, but I can confirm that the last two nights have been the best I think I have ever slept. This mattress is so, so, so comfortable. These sheets are absolutely incredible. Um, I saw in the comments as well, there were quite a few questions about my pajamas. These are from H&M really recently, but I do think they've sold out annoyingly. Um, but I'll try to keep an eye out for them for you. And <laughs> there were also a few different comments saying, Josie, what are you doing? You need to centralize your bed. It's not in the middle of the panels. Well, first of all, we decided it looked better being central under the beam, but also you'll notice that it's still not perfectly central. And darlings, I'm really sorry to um, upset the perfectionists amongst you, but the reason we had to do this is, sorry, kind of messy. I should have tidied this up before filming. Um, the reason is that the floorboards in this house are not straight. In fact, they are pretty darn wonky and this was the only position we could get the bed in without it without it being wonky and basically this is the only place it could be where all four feet would be on the ground. As I mentioned I have ordered some scatter cushions and things like that from Soho Home and we've also just ordered our lampshade so hopefully this will be looking a lot more complete in the next few days. Save a shelter, a hole 
eyes A light that die with the night I thought I would give you an update on the family room. Um, excuse the football on in the background. I just think it's so funny how they play artificial crowd noises. Like Charlie was showing me, there's a couple of different channels. I think on this TV he's got it um, silent, so there's no cheering. But then, I don't even know if I'm allowed to show you what's on Sky Sports or if I'll get demonetized. Um, but on his phone outside he's got it as a podcast while he's doing the gardening. And um, you can hear like fake crowd noises, even the cheering is, I don't know, it's just totally crazy. As you can see, our new TV arrived. I ordered this from John Lewis um, a couple of weeks ago alongside our mattress and we just chose to get it all delivered on the same day so that we could get free delivery, otherwise I think it was like £19. Um, so we decided to buy the Samsung QLED um, 55 inch. It looks absolutely ginormous, I'm not going to lie, Charlie um, chose this. So yeah, it's going to be eventually going up on this wall here. I'm not sure if we're going to do that shortly or if um, we need someone to help us, but that is epic and as I've mentioned in the bedroom I really don't like having big TVs on display because I think they're so ugly they're just a big black box in the room um, so we're actually getting some beautiful cabinets built on this wall eventually but I think it's gonna be quite expensive and as you can imagine our budgets are getting eaten away day by day with all the different things we're doing in the house but what I really wanted to show you um, was firstly how gorgeous this little area looks we're getting the electrician to come over I think next week to pop the lights back in and we've ordered some new lights um, from Pookie. Hopefully they'll be arriving in a few days. But I feel like the stove just makes this area complete. It looks so gorgeous. I think it's really nice to have some flowers there. I might even look at getting some faux flowers in the winter when we don't have so many gorgeous bouquets around. Uh, we've got our little basket here with the wood and the gloves and then we just popped some of our favorite candles here we've got a wicker wood two wicker woods they make a really gorgeous crackling noise when they are lit and a neon um calm and relax candle which is just the most gorgeous fragrance then we've got some fire lighters in this basket and our really totally over the top ginormous matches from soho home so her home has been taking most of my money lately i have been shopping so much on there um, but yeah, really nice little fireside setup, and I am so thrilled with the colours of the walls in here. So, with the green sofa, I think the pink walls just look absolutely gorgeous, and it's not a really girly pink, it's a very earthy kind of countryside house pink. So this is Canvas from Graham and Brown. You last saw this properly, I think, when the primer was on. Um, but now the actual colour itself is on and I think it just looks absolutely stunning. It's a very subtle pink and you can see we went for the slightly lighter shade over on this side. But to be honest, I'm not entirely sure if I love that. So I think we might actually change that for a whiter shade. But I think the tones in this room are just looking so lovely with the greens and then the browns and the pink. I think it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Dexie, what are you doing, young man? We're actually really, really pleased that we had our haircuts ahead of this heatwave, mummy. I'm going to pop um, a video on the screen here now of where Dexter was sunbathing earlier. He likes to cocoon himself in the jasmine plant next to the doorway. It was just so cute. Oh yes, so Charlie planted. It's actually looking a little bit sad at the moment, but Charlie yes. planted um, the hydrangea which the girls from Elizabeth Arden sent us in this giant pot. We had it over um, there in the hydrangea island, but since Charlie grass seeded it, it has been taken over by grass, unsurprisingly. So it's been rescued and now lives in this giant pot and I think it will grow absolutely huge. It's already probably doubled in size since we first planted it with a little bit of water that should come back to life tomorrow morning. They're all looking a bit toasty, aren't they? Yeah, it's just so hot. It's not a good day to move a plant, but you have to move it. It just inside over there. Yeah. Down here, I wanted to quickly show you the herb garden and, um, well, more excitingly, show you the salad box because I don't think I have ever seen a better looking salad box. It is just. Ooh, I got sprinkled on. 
It is looking so healthy and so fruitful. Every single one of these salads, um, salad leaf plants, is just absolutely loving life. They're all looking so, so happy, so juicy, and we have, oh dear lord, we have actually been eating them as well. I've been coming out every couple of days to, to pick them, but they just grow back so, so quickly. This one is my favourite, especially with a honey mustard um, salad. So I'm going to be coming down here shortly to pick some more for dinner. I just need to move the sprinkler onto a different area of the garden. picked up um, a load of post so one of my jobs for today is that admin of changing addresses over companies that I had just forgotten to do when we actually moved house um, some random things like magazine subscriptions and things like that and that reminded me something that has been on my to-do list for such a long time is to actually cancel and organize a lot of my subscriptions because I noticed that I do have quite a lot of things going out of my account and some things kind of doubling up as well so I've been doing a little bit of that kind of admin this afternoon. One of the things which I have cancelled is my ITV hub which is um, the ITV app that I relied on so much last summer when we were in Ibiza because I was so hooked on Love Island last year and yet I wasn't able to watch it without signing up to ITV hub um, because I was abroad. But I wanted to tell you about um, Surfshark which is a VPN or a virtual private network that I am um, signed up to and thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this part of the video because as well as many other things it has meant that I no longer need to worry about not being able to watch my favourite TV shows when I am abroad because what a VPN does is it basically places your laptop anywhere in the world. So say for example I want to watch a TV program that is exclusively aired in the UK but I happen to be on holiday, uh, maybe I'm in Greece but I really want to catch up on um, Masterchef or well Love Island is a really good example, I know it's not on this year which is really tragic. Um, but I could just set my laptop, even though I'm in a different country, to the UK and still be able to watch all of my favourite shows. However, of course, at the moment, we are all stuck at home. Um, I know so many of you may not be based in the UK, so you can watch some of our UK shows if you do this, and using it is so easy. So what makes Surfshark so epic is that you just have to sign up for one account and you can use it across all your devices. So I'm using it on my laptop, I've also got it on my my phone and I've just 10 minutes ago set it up on my iPad as well. I believe they're actually the only VPN that allows you to do it across multiple um, devices for one account so that's really really good and it is literally the easiest thing in the whole world. For someone whose job is online I'm not very techy and yet I figured it out in three minutes you just sign up make an account um, and then you choose from, I'll, sh I'll put an, an overlay on the screen here, but you can basically choose where in the world you want your device to think that it is. It is so clever. So while we're all in lockdown um, and we are not able to go abroad, we're in need of a little bit of extra entertainment. Don't know about you, but I have finished. I feel like I have completed Netflix. I have watched so many things that I love and um, kind of and I was kind of running low on ideas of what to watch next. I was looking for certain films and some of them annoyingly were not available on the UK Netflix. So take for example The Notebook, one of my favourite films, it's one that we don't have on DVD and um, that I really wanted to watch that with Charlie the other day and it wasn't available in the UK but 
From a little bit of searching, I found that it was available in the Singapore version of Netflix. So I just changed, and it's so easy, you just swipe through all the different countries, change it to Singapore, and voila, it was available. I know so many of us are addicted to watching TV series, and say, for example, Grey's Anatomy, you might be able to watch the new season quicker by changing your VPN location to America. So there's so many different uses. It's definitely a great way of never running out of things to watch during lockdown especially. But something else which is really important to me is that it adds another layer of security when you're browsing. So all of your passwords, all of your documents inside your computer, everything just has an extra layer of security, which is really important. We all keep very precious things on our phones and on our laptops and um, hacking is just not something that we want to be dealing with any time, but especially not um, something to add to the stresses of lockdown. So Surfshark actually adds an additional layer of security, protects your data and protects protects you from online tracking as well. So it really is a totally safe way of searching the web and basically having access to content from all over the world. They've very kindly given me a code to share with you guys, which is Mumbler, M-U-M-B-L-R, as in Fashion Mumbler. You can use that to get 85% off and an extra three months for free, which is very generous of them. Um, so I definitely recommend having a little play around. I would recommend downloading it on a phone or iPad because it is super duper easy to use there. Um, I guess it depends where you watch your favourite shows. Yeah, the possibilities are endless. Oh, and if you are also an influencer and you um, have a global audience, it's also really good for creating links that are specific to um, the location of your audience. So say, for example, you have a YouTube channel and half your audience is in the US and half of them are in the UK. You want to provide links for both of them. I can use Surfshark um, to make my laptop think that it's in the US so that I can provide US specific shopping links for you. So that's something else to think about if you are um, creating links. Maybe you've got a website um, or your own YouTube channel. There are just so many useful things to, um, to use it for. So I'll leave all the info down below. I forgot that I left that hyperlapse running. I was probably pulling the strangest faces, but that whole time I've had a little puppy dog fast asleep on my lap. Is mummy's lap the only shaded spot in the garden right now, hot doggy? It is so nice to have my ring back. I feel like I need to give myself a nice manicure to show it off. It's so, so beautiful. <laughs> What's on the Barbie hungry man about town? We have what's called a tomahawk steak. That is insane. And it's a rib of beef. So my belief is, it's basically a ribeye steak and they've just not cut the bone because this is the, not to be too gruesome, but that's the rib bone. Yeah. So it's more, and it looks like a tomahawk. I don't believe it's any different to just a normal rib of beef, which obviously I did at the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, it's just more for show, but I could be wrong. So I'll be interested to know if anyone knows exactly if there's any difference. Did you uh, follow the cooking instructions from the knock knock box? No, Charlie Irons style. Well, for the next one, we should cook following their instructions because it comes with um, resting time and everything. Yeah, we will need to rest. To be honest, the resting time for a big bit of meat is if you cook it for whatever time you cook it for, rest it for that time. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, have you seen that we're burning the hedge? Yeah. I know, we need to move it away. We need to rethink the whole barbecue setup. Yeah. Because this isn't great being near the bin, so. No. Like, it, this is not where the barbecue's gonna live. I think it's probably gonna be near where the summer house is, and we'll have a whole area where that is. A newer gas barbecue, because this is old and not doing very well. Is this one from Clapham, yeah? Yeah, it's quite an old barbecue. I'm not gonna get rid of it for the sake of it, but eventually I'd like to get a new barbecue. Um, and then this area is awesome. And we've got two guests. We always have two guests. <laughs> I'll have my steak medium rare. If you overcook it, I'll kick off. Cheeky monkeys. Epic. Boom. Right, let's get the bone off. Oh, yes. 
Oh wow, that smells good as well. And obviously we can put a bit more on the barbecue for you. Someone commented saying that Smith & Walensky is a oh. New York based uh, steak restaurant. Yeah, there's one in, I think there's one in London. There's a oh. couple in London. Look at that. Oh my god. That's how you want it. I did read a couple of your comments on your YouTube and someone was digging me out for overcooking the beef for our roast the other day. Oh uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which I agree with them. It was overcooked, but why was it overcooked, darling? Because it's why. how my darling fiance likes it. Daddy, we don't mind how it's cooked, as long as we get some. The box. Really? Yeah. Wow. The only ingredient I've added is herbs. Epic. Yeah. Garlic was in the box, baby potatoes. Nice. Spin the spinach is some of the best quality spinach I reckon. Honestly, I reckon I've ever seen actually. Wow. Yeah. And the you asparagus. Don't get spinach leaves like that. Yeah, we've sense. not even used the white asparagus, have we? So. That looks like a rather epic dinner. I don't know if you heard Charlie say, but um, all these ingredients, aside from the herbs, were from the Smith & Walensky Knock Knock box that we got yesterday. Oh, and these lovely placemats um, are from Polkra. They very kindly sent them to us a couple of days ago, as are these wine glasses, which we're using as water glasses, and they happen to match my jug absolutely perfectly. But how lovely are these? We've got six of these um, and the matching coasters. The collection is from a collaboration with a designer called Anna Glover um, and they're all inspired by mythical animals and folklore from ancient Indian, Arabic and European manuscripts called Mirabilia, I think is what it's called. Very cool. Puppies are about to get incredibly excited. Because Daddy mentioned that we might be allowed a little bit of steak. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, we don't quite know what to do with ourselves, Daddy. We're getting so excited. <coughs> yes. <gasps> Daddy's got the balls. Daddy's got the balls. Daddy's got the balls. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Oh, Daddy was so excited. Yes? We're telling you, Daddy, we're very hungry. Can you hurry up, please, Chef? Mm -hmm. Right, just two seconds. What they don't realise is if you're a bit patient, you get a bit more because Daddy has to cut up a bit more. Daddy, we've been patient all evening now. Hurry the fuck up. Yeah. Look how smart these little boys are. Smart little paws, smart little ears, smart little bottoms, and smart little tay tay. <gasps> Daddy! That's quite a lot, actually. Daddy, that is so After you. much. After you. Daddy, we go where you go because you've got the goods. Oh my goodness me. We're so. Excited. Just slowly. Slowly. Careful, my chickens, or you'll get indigestion. We're gonna have lots of burping doggies later. <gasps> this is the best day ever, Daddy. The best day of the year. Best day of the year. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you tell it was laundry day today? <laughs> Do you remember me showing you this hydrangea earlier? Well, Charlie obviously watered it loads earlier and it has already come back to life. It is already looking a hundred times healthier. I reckon in just a few days, this will take over the whole pot. Hydrangeas tend to go a bit wild. <laughs> this one has, for some reason, just shot up. The blooms haven't fully come out yet, um, but it's looking very long. Whereas this one it used to be a lollipop. It used to just be one stem with a big ball of hydrangea. It was one that we got from Sainsbury's actually, and it's just looking incredible. The most beautiful colored blooms, like a beautiful pale green and pink flower. Our gardener actually said if you put uh, rusty nails in the pot, it will turn your hydrangea blue. Not that I particularly want blue hydrangeas. I'm very happy that the soil here produces pink hydrangeas, um, but I just think they're so lovely. 
And I also noticed while we were having dinner that our wisteria is also loving life. It has got loads of fresh new shoots. Here's one that I can show you close up. So it's obviously really, really happy here and it's going to grow a lot bigger. It's already probably doubled in size, I would say. I don't think it was really that cared for before, but we've um, we cut it back and tied it to the wall and it has absolutely flourished. So next spring, we're going to be treated to the most beautiful wisteria across the back of the house here. We've had our dinner and now we're very, very hyper. Dexie! I can see your Tajin! So look, that one there, look, that was in our bed before. I think it will do well there. Show us your hose pipe, darling. <laughs> Where are you off to, Plek Plek? this vlog on my phone because I'm not sure if you just saw but um, the camera fell off the arm of the sofa and you can kind of see the right hand side is dipped into the <clears throat> more than the left hand side the lens has broken and it no longer goes into or out of my camera it just makes that rather disturbing noise I think I bought a guarantee on John Lewis. I really, really hope so, because this is now absolutely unusable. As you might be able to tell from my voice, I am rather grumpy about it. 